got it under control. Isn't it funny? It's a cake. I got it under control. I got it under control. You okay, honey? I just got up too fast. So, welcome to our new house member, Alan. Hi. Oh my god. How do you do it? Eat. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really fucking hungry. <laughs> so, how did you prepare physically, but also emotionally, to do to the bomb? Um, ironically, I wrote a book this past year, and I wrote my chapter where I spoke about my experiences with eating disorders a week before I got this script, and. Um, I had just been doing some research in my own journals from when I was younger to write about it. And so I had almost subconsciously been doing a lot of preparation already. Little did I know that I'd be, you know, now reading the script about a young girl who went through a lot of the same things I did. So I really went back and looked at a lot of my old um, journal entries and diary entries. Um, and I watched documentaries. I went to an Anorexics Anonymous meeting with my director and we spoke to girls in recovery. I met with the head of a clinic in Los Angeles to learn about the facts and the medical attention um, that, is, that goes into you know, recovery with the disorders. And then I work with a nutritionist to lose weight as healthfully as possible. Um, they checked in on me constantly. I was held accountable, you know, pretty much for all aspects of the filming. And that was really important because I wanted to make sure I did it as healthfully and as true to the character as possible. So did it feel like a personal project? Almost a personal Oh, a hundred percent. It was very much, very therapeutic for me. I learned so much about um, the medical side to all of this that I had never really surrounded myself with. The facts as opposed to myths that we create in our heads when we're living in a disorder. And I, yeah, I, I really, I felt really proud at the end of the day to be able to have done it and be able to talk about it now and hopefully spread the word and, and allow other people to use their voices about it too. So uh, recently we have a huge success that is uh, 13 Reasons Why. Mm. And it talks about a teenager's suicide. Do you think this movie could like make the same impact for teenagers but with the other topic, with uh, eating disorders and the, the way they see themselves. Well, I think it's incredible that Netflix has taken a risk on my film, but also on 13 Reasons Why, because it does deal with subject matter that a lot of young people feel alone in, or that we as a society consider quite taboo to talk about. And I think what's amazing is that 13 Reasons Why is, is entertaining, but also informational. And you almost forget that you're watching a TV show because you're so engrossed in the subject matter, but that it doesn't feel tutorialized. And I feel like To The Bone does that as well. It's, it's a film and it's appealing to watch because it's entertaining, it's actually quite funny at moments. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you learn so much about it if you know someone who suffered, that you, you yourself are, or you just heard about it. And I think, it's putting it into the mainstream as saying, this is important. You know, this is the first feature film that's being done about eating disorders. And when Marty, my director, was pitching it and trying to, you know, come up with the money to, to do the film originally, she got a lot of people saying, yeah, but it's just not a big enough topic. And it's, it's affecting so many people and it's becoming more and more prevalent with women and, and also men mm -hmm. around the globe. So I think it's really commendable that Netflix is doing it. Do you think this is focused uh, only to people suffering it to find comfort? Because I think maybe the people that is surrounding, uh, surrounding someone with the problem, it will find it very useful to... Oh yeah, I agree. I think it's, it's not only for people that have gone through it themselves or are going through it, but it's the ones, you know, it's the loved ones surrounding them. Um, my, my sister and my stepmother in the movie are huge pivotal characters and my, my mother in the story and it's all about how it doesn't just affect the person but those around them and it's a disorder that even when you're keeping it private it still dominoes into every aspect of your life in some regard and I think it's I've spoken to people who have found great emotional support in the film because they've better understood the mindset of the person going through it, but also felt comfort knowing that they're not the only ones feeling that way when trying to comfort the person. So I think there's something from every angle. And uh, as you talk, there is a little bit of humor, it's mm. dark humor. 
uh, why it's helpful to use that tone to tell the story? Well, I think like anything in life, it's important to have moments of lightness in the dark because it, it you're able to breathe for a second, you know, and I think with, with humor, it's very specific what kind of humor you find funny or what works with the tone of the movie, but my director, Marty Knoxon, her writing is so sassy and snarky and witty that it, it really works with this film because as someone who, who went through it, there is a dark sense of humor that you use to deflect the problem and to kind of get through a situation. And I think she inserts that in moments where you just need it as an audience member and you don't even maybe know that you need it, but all of a sudden you find yourself laughing and you're like, wait, wait, should I be laughing at this? And you're like, but it's real life. You know, Ellen, my character is, is sarcastic and she's a lighthearted girl, but she just suffers with a lot of darkness. And I think that's like humanity. And uh, how, did you, how did you get the role? I was sent the script, I read the script, and I immediately, it was like a guttural reaction. I was like, I, I have to meet this director. I, I must at least get a shot at this movie. And I met with her and we had this amazing lunch and we bonded so much over not just the script, but just things in life. And I went home and said, oh my God, I have to do this and I made a call. And I guess she went home and said, oh my God, she has to do this and made a call. And then it just kind of happened. And did you be able to put something of your personal uh, experience or your personality into the script, into the character? Definitely. Marty was, was way open to um, collaboration, even though it's semi-autobiographical of hers and some of these things did happen to her. She wanted you know, to know about my experiences. She didn't know going into my meeting with her that I had any recollection of or, or association with it. I, I willingly gave that information to her because I felt so strongly about it. But after we started, you know, admitting to each other our, our personal stories, I was able to kind of vocalize my experiences and she wanted to put some of it into the script. And then also just the nuances and performance that I felt were very myself that maybe no one else is ever going to notice. Um, how was uh, the shooting with other girls? All it was so fun. I know that people are probably going to think that this was like a very dreary movie to film. It was one of the most exciting, fun experiences because all the girls on set and Alex Sharp made it so, like, made it a good time. You know, Marty didn't want it to be a dark and depressing movie set. She want, It was her first film and she wanted it to be a place where people felt creatively inspired and wanted to come to work excited every day. And I was so thankful for that because it's a memory that I'll look back on and know I actually had a great time making that movie about a subject matter that one would assume would be really dark and depressing. And I think the movie mirrors that. I think it shows that we had a great time and we needed to have a really strong bond in the film and we were able to create that because we had fun on set. That's awesome because one something that one might think is like, what's, it's a risk for someone like that experience eating disorder, it's a risk a risk to go back in, yeah. in, but it's worth it, right? And if you yeah. enjoy it? No, I mean, it, it was definitely a risk and it was a risk that I knowingly went into and, and took, but I knew that it was for a greater purpose. I knew I was going to tell a greater story than just my own and that the end result hopefully would spark conversation among young women and men. And that was my goal. That was what I hoped. And um, the fact that I can look back on it and say that I think we did that, we accomplished that, but I also had a great time, who would have known? So what the, why people should watch the movie? I think people should watch the movie because whether you've gone through it yourself or going through it, you know someone who's going through it, you've never really experienced anything about this subject matter. It's important to know about it because it is so prevalent today. It's it's an epidemic, you know, it's something that's that's affecting men and women. And I think there's there's a way for these kinds of subject matters to be addressed that is entertaining, but at the same time informational. And I just think it's really important to know that you know, you're know you never alone in what you go through. And hopefully this story will inspire other people to tell their stories. And uh, what about your book? How was writing your book and how is exposing yourself because it's autobiographical, so yeah. it must be like yeah. terrifying. Yeah, it's, it, writing the book was terrifying and you know, weirdly I wrote my chapter on my experiences the, the week before I got this script and it really was kismet. I think the universe was like, this is something you need to do now and talk to more people about. Um, but it was great and ever since it came out, it's been so wonderful to have people coming up and expressing themselves and telling their stories and admitting to things that maybe they had never said before. I was just outside at the hotel and a young girl came up to me and was like, 
you have no idea. I, I relate to your book so much and I feel like I've had the same experiences. And to me, that's the greatest gift of all. I wrote it for people to not feel alone and I'm receiving every day that I'm not alone. And I just never expected to get that. Um, after, sorry, mort Mortal Instrument? Yeah. It's quite different in Spanish. So I yeah. Have to the name. Um, what is it in Spanish again? Es Cazadores de Sombras. Right, right, right. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, would you like to do like another teenager saga theme? Um, I would love to do, you know, like another action type of movie, whether that's like a comic book kind of thing or some sort of fantasy. I do enjoy that. I love, I love fantasy film. Um, and I love doing stunts. So, any way to combine the two would be fun again. Uh, is there any like saga you would like to participate, like old or new? Um, I don't know. Probably some of the comic book stuff. I don't know. Um, Maybe there's a superhero for yeah, you. Yeah, like superhero stuff, like Batwoman or something. I don't know. It'd be kind of fun. Some of them actually seem like they're doing okay. Like they might get lives and be semi-interesting people. Did you just say something optimistic? I did say semi.